Hello and welcome to 18 WJTS Inform. I'm your host, Bill Potter, and joining us through a Zoom meeting is State Representative Shane Lindar. State Representative Lindar, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here with you again. Yeah, well, there was a bill that uh, is, is, I guess, still in contention, so to speak, uh, is Bill Senate Bill 389. Is it Senate Bill 389? Okay. That is correct. All right. Now, you are involved in that, uh, especially because we're in a, a rural area. Can you talk about that, Bill? Because you, you mentioned to me that this took most of your time this whole week. Right, right. Yeah. The, and so this has been a, a, an issue. Uh, it, it deals, this specifically, Bill, deals particularly with the IDEM, Indiana Department of Environmental Management, and their ability to regulate what's called isolated wetlands. Uh, so these aren't the wetlands that are in bottoms that are attached to the Potoka River or any of those streams or navigable waterways. Uh, this bill doesn't touch those wetlands, um, but it specifically dealt with what IDEM, Indiana Department of Environment, Environmental Management, has termed an isolated wetland. And, and so, yeah, it's been a big issue um, for our farming community in particular, but it impacted uh you know, developers and impacted quite honestly, just private property owners. Maybe you're not a, a farmer necessarily, but uh, the state has come in and said, you have an isolated wetland on your property. And in effect, at that point, you had no control over your property. Um, and, and so uh, what the bill did is, is it looked it, it just for some background, I guess, isolated wetlands, again, are wetlands that are not attached to any stream or navigable waterway again not attached to the Potoka River so maybe a low spot in a field or something like that and then there's three different classifications of isolated wetland uh, the wetlands that we dealt with specifically are class one wetlands which is the lowest classification I'll just read uh, the character some of the characteristics of a class one wetland are, are the wetland supports only minimal wildlife or aquatic habitat low hydrologic function, hydrologic function, in other words, didn't do much as far as water uh, retention or, or water filtering and a lot of the things that normal wetlands do. And so what we tried to do with this bill is strike that balance between private property rights, allowing farmers to utilize their fields and things like that unregulated and and still and still make sure that IDEM has some jurisdiction over the wetlands that are truly productive and helpful to our ecology, and and so that's uh, again as you stated, uh, you know it was hotly contested. To be honest, there were folks on both sides of this bill who who thought it was a good idea. Some folks thought it was a bad idea, um, and and so it was um, garnered a lot of my attention this week. Yeah. Let me, this may be a dumb question, but why is this an IDEM issue and not a DNR issue? Am I looking at this wrong? No, no, no. It, it, and that, it's a great question. And, and uh, I think it's one that, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people don't know. So uh, DNR typically, uh, the, the way in a, in a nutshell, DNR typically looks at the flow of the water. IDEM has typically looked at what goes into the water. How the wetlands got, uh, the IDM got jurisdiction over the wetlands. I don't know that there's a real good answer to that. It's just, it's what it is, right? And so it's a, it's a fine question. I just don't have a great answer to it. Uh, in fact, this is one of the areas where the state of Indiana is more restrictive than the federal government. So the federal government, through a couple of court cases in, in the last decade or couple, several decades, quite honestly, I'm um, losing track of time here. But anyway, it, it has determined that they don't, they chose not to uh, govern or regulate, it, ice, or regulate isolated wetlands. Indiana has come in and said that they were going to uh, 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 um, regulate the isolated wetlands. So IDEM somehow got in on the act, and, and so they've been the ones that have been regulated. It was through Indiana, the, the Indiana legislature, I think, back in the 90s, 93, something like that, I think it happened. So what is the status of the bill now? It's in the House, right? So we passed it out of the House, but because we it was a Senate bill originally, mm -hmm. because we passed it out of the House, it goes back to the Senate, and they have to either concur to the changes we made because, because we did change it in, in the House, or they dissent. They did concur on Wednesday, I think. It was Wednesday or maybe yesterday. Uh, but what, in other words, they said, okay, we accept the changes that you made, House of Representatives. Once that happens, 
then it goes uh, to the governor for signing. Okay. Now, there is some controversy over this bill, as you mentioned. What are some, some misinformation that you think is out there that people don't fully understand and they, they need to, to maybe understand to make it easier for them to understand it? Sure. And that's a great question. I, I, you know, a lot of folks are saying that we have, I've seen stories already that said we are, you know, going to destroy all the wetlands in Indiana. And, and just to be clear, the wetlands that we dealt with here, number one, could already be, um, uh, so a farmer, for instance, again, if he had a class one wetland on his property, he could already uh, do you know he could already go through and, and 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 cultivate it and plant it and do all the things that he wanted to do there he or she wanted to do they would just would have had to mitigate that process so they just would have had to fill out permits and then mitigation could cost it started at about eighty thousand dollars an acre that's where it started for a farmer to go through and do some of these things uh, and I've got photos from local constituents who had a Literally, it was a wet spot. It used to be where hogs, uh, I don't want to get too technical, Bill, but a, a hog waller, right? Right, right. Uh, in, in the field. So it created a low spot and water would sit there. And and uh, then IDEM would come along and, and say, boom, wetland. And so the farmer, again, would have to go around that area because IDEM had determined a wetland. So, uh, so, so again, farmers could do this kind of stuff. They just had to jump through a lot of hoops and pay a lot of money to do it. So... All we did was say that, okay, for a class one wetland, you're not going to have to jump through those hoops and pay that money to do it. And, and, and so it doesn't touch, the bill does not touch what most people consider a wetland, right? When you, when you look at, again, I mentioned a Patoka River a couple of times, the Patoka River bottoms, the, the bottoms between uh, Jasper and Huntingburg, right? Where you've got the, those, that floodplain down there, those would be more of a wetland, you know, typically uh, that we would think of where... There's a great deal, uh, you know, those wetlands will provide uh, water filtering and, and, and uh, habitat for a lot of migrating birds and, and, and things like that. So wouldn't touch anything like that. This is really just trying to get at, um, you know, some of those, some of those areas that are, are just, you know, qu quite honestly, low spots in a field and, and, and making sure farmers can, can have that access again. So basically it'll fix the hog wallers. Which the hog you know, wallers, yeah. When you started down that path, I thought he's talking about a hog waller. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, you know, again, I, I, I just if, if there are questions on the bill, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to talk about it because there, there are a lot of nuances with the bill. There's a few other things to be fair that we did in there uh, on ephemeral streams. I didn't mention an ephemeral stream is a stream that's only a stream, you know, quote unquote when there's a lot of rain or, or snow melt or something like that. That was another thing we took a look at in this bill said that IDEM, you can't come into somebody's properly property and say, we're going to regulate an ephemeral stream. And, and so that was another component of the bill that we did uh, that we did touch on. And then uh, there, you know, that we, we changed the definition of a class two wetland. So there are a few other things we did to the bill to be, to be fair that I haven't touched on here, but the biggest thing was the deregulation of the class one wetlands. And I, I would just say, if there's, you know, questions, I'm happy to, to speak with people about that because it, it is, and I recognize a contentious issue. I, you know, I had friends who didn't agree with me on this issue at the state legislature and, you know, certainly uh, respect those differences of opinion when people have those. So, uh, you know, just happy to talk about those if people want more information on it. So. Well, we really appreciate you taking the time today to talk with us, and, and good luck as we, I guess we're into the final few weeks of the legislation. Correct. Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we may, there's a chance we may get done early. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, but not holding my breath <laughs> right. uh, on that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Technically, we were scheduled to go to the 28th of April. There's a chance we may get done this week, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, thank you very much. We have been talking with State Representative Shane Lindauer. Thank you for watching 18WJTS. We are local, local people watching local people.